Welcome to the June Accu Quilt. See, I'm so in tune to July coming up because it's going to be my birthday. Yeah. But I might as well just stay 68 for a little bit longer, huh? Yeah. So what's really fun is I see some new faces in the audience and some that are coming back haven't been here for a while. So I welcome you and all of the people that have been coming here. I want you to think of some of the best tips that you can give the new people, okay? Because I have the best tip ever. Are you ready for this? Okay, are we ready? You are ready for this. Do not leave your mats in a hot car. <laughs> really? I think I had it draped over something. Who knows what I did? But anyhow, now I'm thinking if I lay it back in my hot car, will it flatten out? Yes. Put, um, it would be a good idea to put something on top of it, but I am concerned about what I could put on top of it. <laughs> put your baby on it. Put my baby on it. I don't know. Put it in hot water. Maybe I need to just get rid of it and go to the store and get a new one. <laughs> and, where, and where could you buy one of those? I could buy it right here. <laughs> and they will say, Elle, you've already taken about 10 of those. How many mats do you need? <laughs> See, every time I can't find it, I just get new inventory. <laughs> that works. That works. That works really good. Don't, I will not put it in the microwave. Trust me, I won't put it in the microwave. Put a Bible or a dictionary on it. I don't think I want to put my Bible on it, but maybe the dictionary. But the dictionary is really obsolete now, and a lot of those things I've gotten rid of, right? <laughs> no, they're still there. Well, anyhow, I have three patterns ready for you to do today. And the one that I'm going to focus on, I'm just going to get rid of this one, right? Yeah. Let's get rid of it. This, that's kind of useless. I think you should put it in the car and see if it flattens. Yeah, I will. I'll take it out to my hot car and see if that happens. But the, um, the die that I'm going to really start with is number four. Number four. And I love Yankee Puzzle. I figured out how to make it so fast. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So this is what the block looks like. This is my little six inch block. Yankee Puzzle. Is it cute? Well, it's like, it's so simple. But whenever you sew blocks together, then you start to get a secondary pattern. And that's what I really like. Can you see the secondary oh, pattern? It's just really simple. Very pretty. Yay, cool. I really, I really like it too. This is the six inch, and I love my nine inch. Look at my nine inch. Isn't that fun? Really fun colors. I love all of the fun colors. But it's just like, it's like the 10 minute block. You know, once again, I, I love it. So it's basically a patch that you would call like a quarter square. It's got like one, two, three, four triangles to put together into one square. And it's four of these that go together to make a block. And so I'm just going to do it really easy. Whenever I set this all up on my directions, I knew I wanted you to make two of them because it's so much fun. So I wrote your directions first for the six inch for two, and this is what it says. To cut basically two lights, five by nine, rough cutting, a medium, five by nine, and a dark, five by nine. I'm really into these dots, especially the since, the, the dots, especially <laughs> since Sue and I spent hours one time going through stores, every dot. every dot we could find. Since it's hot now, I've got to use them, right? We Next year, they might not be. <laughs> so it's just, it's just, we got dotty, we got dotty. Okay, so this is for 
the six inch die. This is number four, so I'm going to give it to Sue. Get ready, get ready. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow my pattern. I'm going to take a dark and a light. I've been learning how to fold and stack <coughs> everything so you don't need to reorganize. And that saves you a lot of time. So the first set, the dark goes on the bottom and the light goes right sides to it, right sides together. And then the second set, you take the second light and the medium. Okay, and you flip that right sides together. So we've got pairs all right sides together, two right sides together. So I'm just going to stack them up into one. You guys have to turn the page. Beep, we're already on the second page. That's fast. Why are they sewn? Pardon me? Sewn? Sewn? No, that's the line on the checkerboard. Oh, they're not sewn yet. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, they're not supposed to be. explaining why you're putting them. Yeah, but they're not supposed to be sewn. <laughs> They're not supposed to be sewn. That was interesting. No, you're not supposed to be sewn. No sewing. No sewing. Unsew. So look at my cool tool. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but I've got a stiletto on one end and a seam ripper on the other. Is that cool? Pardon me? Um, it's... Um, Cherry. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so don't take them apart. It, you can, you can, yeah, I'm going to take them. Okay, so Sue ran them through the go. And you slide. Yes. So, Nancy, this is new for you. Oh, slide. I'm failing on my first step. What's a hot tip to make this slide better? Did anybody figure that out yet? I have a hot tip. What's the hot tip? The hot tip is you put, when your mat Yes. You put a piece of paper, like recycled paper, whatever will make it smooth, between the mat and the fabric, and then it doesn't stick to the mat. Oh. 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 That's, my tip. That's, That's good. good. That's a good tip. I like that tip. Yay. And I hope everybody heard that because Sue likes to put a paper on top of her fabric and then her mat so her mat slides. And this is what I like to do. I like to lift this stuff off first, okay? I like to be all organized, yes. And then I just swing it a little bit because I do need the exercise. However, I should do it with my yeah. right arm. Just build this arm up right, and then you get rid of that. But the tip would be have a wastebasket next to your area. You don't. You got to. Yeah, the cats love this. Okay, so I like to take this to my sewing machine, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take one triangle, okay, and then we're just going to go all around because these triangles are in order, and so we're just going to stack them up, and they're ready to sew, and you don't have to figure it all out all over again. Is that cool? Very cool. Can you put this on the board? You can. You can put it on the board. Don't burn yourself. Okay, so now, I'm telling you, you're looking at assembly line sewing your triangles. I know it looks simple, but I want to tell you how easy it is to sew on the wrong side. Okay. It is so easy so that you don't sew. It would be really cool if you just put this side away from you, the, the longest side. The side that's on the straight of the grain. Okay? All right? Okay. So it's all organized so you don't have to reorganize it. So you just pick up the first two pairs. Oops, I think I have it upside down. Okay. The first two pairs, they're already right sides together. The long side or the straight side goes away from you, right? Goes away from you and then you just sew one pair on this um, it actually is the bias okay and I think I needed to have my little jumper scrap and I threw it away Sue I left it for you I know but I threw it on the floor 
Use a jumper. Don't throw your jumper on the floor. Second tip. Okay. Step two. <laughs> Oh. Oh yeah. With my stiletto, I did pick them up off of that. That is really cool. That's tip number three. We we are just full of it, aren't we? What's that? Is that cute? Okay. So now the white was on the top and the black was underneath, right? And so now you just pick up the next stack. Don't stab yourself with the stiletto because you will bleed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so then you pick up the next patch and it is already right sides together and it is the medium, the turquoise, okay? So that's all you have to do. Is this good? You just keep on picking them up, and you just assembly line sew. So use a quarter of an inch seam. I have on a new foot today. Just remember which triangle side you sew on. And you guys go, well, that's simple. Just wait. <laughs> I'm telling you, I still have to use my own pictures. OK, so you just keep on assembly line sewing. Now, Oh, yes, I'm, I'll show you that. Oh, wow, I'm bleeding really good now. Band-aid, band-aid. The, the next tip is to always have a band-aid in your sewing area. Oh, how many have one? How many nurses do we have in the room? Yeah, a couple of us. Oh, good, this is a good thing. Oh, my gosh. And so one of the reasons I keep on assembly line sewing is because you're not going to have to pin your pieces in between either. <laughs> Are you coming to my rescue, Sue? It's getting serious. <laughs> the person who gave me this stiletto did tell me that the stiletto was really sharp. <laughs> One. Okay. So these are my pairs. Okay. okay. Let me make sure I have enough. Okay. So now can I get rid? I'm putting my jumper right back there. So I have one pair. Okay. So you clip every two. Okay. One, two, and then you have three, and then you have four. <laughs> okay. So I have four. I know. This is just my new jewelry, isn't it lovely? It's quite an accessory. Oh, but I forgot to put makeup on my spot. I was in my plastic boxes organizing my stuff, and my plastic box snapped on, snapped shut on me. And that's what happened. Oh my gosh, thin skin. That's what it happens when you get to be 68, soon to be 69. Oh my gosh. Okay, so look, I have four pairs, right? For one block. One, two, three, four. Was that fast? It was. And look, here's your second one all set to go. Wow. Yes, Brenda. Okay, go back to the front page where you were just looking at the stitches that weren't supposed to be there, Brenda. It shows you how to stack. Well, I know it's the light on the stack and then the blue on the light. Right. And then when you stack them. And then turn the page and it has the the light on top. Okay. Yeah. So light, medium, dark, light. Yes. But... If you just stack them, you don't have to think anymore. You don't have to think You're overthinking, I'd be. You have to remember to turn your diagonal different. Yes, when you, when you lay them out. Okay. You have to be careful. It's tricky. You'll no, sew the whole stack with the wrong side. Okay, so now I'm all ready. I'm, I'm not going to clip these apart. I clipped apart every two, so I still have my little quarters, quarter square all there. And so if you just open them up, 
This is what it looks like. You've got that little connecting thread, which is as good as a pin. And then you just take this. You've got a little flippy arrow. It says flip this over. And remember, we're going to do that swirly thing, the swirly girl thing. So you always push the seam on the top up and the underneath seam down. Okay. How many of you do the swirly girl stuff? The swirly girl. We're the swirly girls. You're the swirly girls. <laughs> okay, now I really I want to show you this because the engineer corner, the engineer corner, it's actually wider than a quarter of an inch. Okay? I'm going to take it right down here. And I'm going to line this corner up. Okay, so it's more than a quarter of an inch wide right there. But you're going to sew a quarter of an inch. And this, this took me quite a while to see what in the heck's going on here. But this is what's going to happen. Now push the seam up right there in the middle. And when you do that, hold your stiletto. Be very careful with your stiletto. It is a weapon. <laughs> It is a weapon. So I, I just really want to show you that, what it looks like, so Ryan can go up close. Can you see this right here? Let me cut this off. So you don't actually go clear up to the very tip to make your seam. You only go in a quarter of an inch. And what happens is that you're going to have a blunt top. I'm going to cut my threads and I'm going to put my jumper piece back in there. I'm getting really good, huh? Yep. Okay, so before we open that up, let's just do that swirly girl thing. Mm -hmm. You've got a, um, a little connecting thread, and you just take your, um, take your stiletto and cut one more time. We will get it one more time. Oh my gosh, these scissors look too sharp too. <laughs> That's why I gave them to Ellie to use one time. She said, oh, Grandma, I can't use those. Those are too sharp. <laughs> okay, Ellie, you're smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just put your stiletto and pick out those stitches that are just in that vertical seam. One more clip. Okay, so I did everything right here, and I did everything right here. So then when you open it up, and then you just take your seam, go to the right, go clockwise, just go right around six o'clock to the left and nine o'clock. And that opens that cute little four patch and you mush it. Okay, and when you get up here, okay, Sue, you've got to press it very carefully because you're gonna actually have this little blunt top. Said the pressure's on. The pressure's on. You have this Literally. little blunt top. Okay? So that's cute. Okay, so now Ryan can go on her. And she's going to press it in a circle. You do it from the top, and I, I do it. So I don't get any pleats. And I do it from the bottom. I do it from the bottom, and then I turn it over and get the pleats out. Yeah, I do it from the wrong side, and then I turn it over and watch for pleats. And you this can. This is the best pressing I can do for you. Oh, look at that. No pleats. Whoa, no pleats. Okay, I have three more to sew, and who has thought up the really best tip? That was a good tip, though. I like that one. And I'm going to give you my scissors. You're good on tips. Who's got another tip? Okay, <laughs> think, think, think of your tips. Nancy, you are new today, so you're not supposed to know all the tips yet. Oh, I will. <laughs> That's it. We can bet on that tip. Okay. <gasps> How about, oh, no tips? Well, I have a tip. Yes, what's your tip? Do you have to talk in the mic? 
Okay, hand Brenda the microphone. I have to just want to make it simple. Okay, yep. will you hand Brenda the microphone? She's about, and Ryan, you could even take your camera on Brenda while she gives this hot tip. Oh, no. Okay, Brenda. We're ready for your tip. Okay, now I'm in trouble. I opened my big mouth. Now I have to answer a question or ask a question. Well, first of all, we keep our notebooks. I pre-cut. Is it not on? You, oh, you can't hear it in here. Okay, everybody it's just out there. The, the 500 people out there watching just <laughs> hear you. <laughs> okay, the 500 people out there watching. When I do these blocks, Eleanor, uh -huh. I pre cut my fabrics and then I cut the little pieces with the die cutter. I put them in a Ziploc baggie with a little label on a piece of paper in the Ziploc baggie so that I don't get confused because once I've cut all these little pieces, I can't tell one from another. You know what? You're perfectly right. You're perfectly smart. You could should come to my sewing room right now because literally my room is in pieces. Oh. It's really bad because I haven't, I neglected to get everything if I cut extra into that cute little plastic bag. We should have stock in Ziploc plastic bags. Don't I you feel think? I've had, I've bought cases of Ziploc baggies. So when I come to class, I bring a small sandwich box of sandwich bags, uh -huh. and I stuff in it little squares of white paper and a pencil. So when I pull the bag out, I have the paper and the pencil handy. That is a great tip. I think we need Brenda to come over and organize it. Yes. You don't want to see Yay. my sewing room. You really don't. But my world is that, in Ziploc baggies. Yeah. That's a really good tip. I really like that. I have to tell you a funny story. I was down teaching at a but guild. You had to keep working while you were. <laughs> and, um, I was staying at this woman's house, and she was just retired from DuPont that makes a type of Ziploc bags. And so when she retired, they asked her what she wanted. She said she wanted Ziploc bags. She had an entire bedroom full of Ziploc oh. bags. <laughs> Really funny. Oh my gosh. No rolling. That is pretty uh -huh. funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, the cool thing about when you swirl these seams, when you lay them down and you put and you want to put them together, all of the seams lock. Did you know that? Because that's what's the um, the trickiest thing. You know, if you just push them to one side, they they wouldn't lock. But now whenever you put them like this, so it's the fun, it's the windmill, the windmill. And one of the reasons I love AccuQuilt is because now you don't have to square them up. Oh, yeah. Yay! Yay! That's the best part. That's, that's the amazing part. But isn't that fun to just zip that around like that? Okay, so now, now comes the tricky part getting the windmill in the dark, in the center. Okay. It's going good, huh? Yes, yes it is. Yes? And look, okay. you have another one. Isn't that nice? Yes, yes. great. Yeah, you should, you oh, should love it. Need impressive. some more stitches. Some more stitches cool. taken out. Cool. Okay, I'm nearly ready to pull over. Good job. And I was going to tell you about the Ziploc bags. When Sue and I travel, we quite often can't eat our whole meal. And I'm constantly asking her for a Ziploc bag. <laughs> it's like, aren't I? Yes, that's her job to carry extra along with her. That's, that's very important. And Band-Aids. <laughs> yes, Band-Aids are very important. Okay. So look at that. Isn't that cute? That is so adorable. So, no little creases. So, but whenever you flip this, we're going to go down straight. So, when you flip this right sides together, this seam right here, this is what we want to sew. So, here it's going toward the black, and underneath it's going towards 
the white the white and so that's that's the whole beauty of making this and what you do is sew these two row these blocks together and when you go across the other way you can make another cute little swirly yay let me see how fast i can do this okay so just butt that behind there and stop and just i always fold it back Fold it back, look at it so that it's going to line up. Just line it in there. Get it all lined up, clear to the tip. Ta-da! And then open this one. Look at it, line it up. And you can feel. You can feel if it's flat. You can tell if it's flat. And just go right across there. Line it up at the bottom. Look at it. Use your stiletto. Look at me, I switched to another stiletto. <laughs> I guess I feel safer. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that was mine. I gave it to Sue. Are you yeah, did selling you? Those? They're coming in on the 24th of June. Yeah, those are very cool. With the little tip yeah. on them. Okay, so to get that swirling again, now I, I didn't clip it in the middle. Don't just leave it all connected. So flip it right sides together, get it all lined up there, and just go right across. Ta-da! And so you can swirl this one, open up the middle, like push the top seam up. That's the secret. Push the top seam up. And the underneath seam will just naturally go down. But if you if you forget and you put the top seam down, don't stress, don't worry. All you do is swirl counterclockwise. Oh, that's if you, a great twist. Yes, oh good. We're just full of it today, aren't we? You don't want to show up because if it's going up, it actually pushes the needle down. Uh-huh. If it's going down, sometimes it separates. Right. It does, absolutely, it separates. Just slightly, but I mean, if you want to have this perfect center that you can just show off. It's flat, yeah. Okay, so on the back, you can just do exactly the same thing. Unsew those little stitches right in the seam and swirl it counterclockwise. Okay, so Dory said, did I have any tips on using the, um, nine inch die that that is sad huh and i've worked at that so we don't know why we need four triangles but there's only three on there mm -hmm. there's only three and um at first i was folding them in half and then i said oh my gosh i um i'm just gonna go ahead and do two stacks okay we're gonna do this all over again brenda okay now we have black, so we're going to do two stacks, okay? Black, and what goes right sides together to it? A light. A light. A light, okay? Right sides together, and then we have what color? Red. Medium. 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 And what goes with that? Light. Light, like that, and we flip that. So medium's on the top, and then you just pick them all up. And you stack them up like that. Okay, now look at this. Hmm, we're only gonna get two. Two, we're only gonna get two. So what I did was it says on the next page, do it all over again. Those are four by eight? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. So you do, um, a second stack just like this and just cut only two put all all four of them together okay I mean all eight of them stack up all eight of them and I'm going okay where's my other ones oh no it's not there okay so go ahead and just cut two at a time and do a second stack to cut two more and then you'll have a total of eight Then you have a total of four. I can't add. No, None of you said that. No. You turned to Joanne and said she can't add, but you didn't tell me. <laughs> okay. She doesn't so, miss a thing. 
So what I found out when you slide that away, it's like, okay, so this is just part of one. So I said, okay, I can't waste that. So you can take these and you have two. You have a nice stack here. But you can take this and just put it on another. I always like, okay, I can't waste that. Let's cut it up into another size triangle. That one would be too little. Ooh, this is perfect. So you just put the little ends that you trimmed away. Pardon me? You need your mat. Here, put this on the other end. Look at this. Don't waste anything. Just keep on cutting all that. This is all you have to throw away now. Here. Stay there. <laughs> I need a baggie for all my, exactly. I do try, that's my problem. I try to sew them right away. See, you guys are so organized. <laughs> now, what do you do with these little scraps? <laughs> give them to Brenda. Give them to Brenda. Okay, you give them to Brenda. But anyhow, I've got all sizes of these cute little things going. And I wish that I were organized and everything was done. But anyhow, this is the, um, isn't that cute? That really is pretty. And if you really want to keep, um, you see how you have the secondary pattern of the windmill? Mm -hmm. I was thinking I'd love to make more of this one because the turquoise is not really dominant in here. Right. The turquoise isn't dominant, oh. but in this block, wow. don't you think the red oh, would be really yeah. cool in yeah. a secondary pattern? Yeah. I think it'd be really cool. And that's why I have another little baggie <laughs> with the fabric in it, if I get to it. <laughs> we can't stand that either. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> the next tip is have a design wall. You have to have a design wall. Oh, it would. Plus, it's called Yankee Pride. Whoa, Yankee Pride. Okay, so I'm going to put this one back in my baggie with all my fabric. I'm going to sew that together while you guys are um, sewing yours together. Okay, so I used number four, and I started just having fun with four. And so turn the next page, beep. We got another four. And now it's, it's really interesting. It's different. You sew a different side of four. Oh. oh, so let me see here. This is the big side. Okay, so this is called windmill and that's a little, isn't that cute? That's the six inch here. Let me put it. Or this is the nine inch windmill. And I did this one with the six inch. Oh, Cute, bright yeah, colors, huh? Yeah. Summary. Summary. But now this time I did something different. <laughs> Always doing something different. Okay, Dory. This is another way you can cut your little. Um, um, nine. nine inch triangles. So I cut a longer strip. I did a four by 15 of the medium, the four by 15 of the medium, which is the yellow, the first medium. Mm -hmm. And then actually, I didn't have enough of the dark. Um, I'm running out. But so I'm just like going to add that right on there. 
So we're trying to extend it, right? Yeah. So it says fold it right sides together, fold it right sides together, and then just cut three triangles, and then use the extra to cut one more, okay? So there's, you can cover up and you can get three. Okay, cut three. Matt. 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 So could we use parchment paper as with the paper uh -huh. under the mat? Okay. And I'm going to get the square. What number is the square? Yeah. Number two. And how many squares do we need? Four. And what color are they? Medium. Green. Green. Okay. They're, they're like, we do need parchment. Okay, so let me show. Let me have this one. Okay, so this is what happens. When you cut three, you can peel away three, but then you just go ahead and you take what's left over. You just take what's left over, keep these right sides together, and then just, okay, so if you put it like this, you would waste a lot, right? Okay, let me cut this off. You don't want to waste. So it wouldn't go good. It doesn't go good that way. But what if you took it and you turned it and you line up this cut edge with that? Is that better? Is that better? Okay, so then you can just get your fourth one out of the end of that piece. I tried cutting um, two and two, folding them two and two. And it seemed that you use less fabric when you cut three, and then you turn that same piece around and you cut one more. So that's what I really like. And it, said on, it says on there, doesn't it? It says cut three triangles and one triangle. So get your three, and you're just going to sew a different side. Remember what we did before. Did we sew? No, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. But what do you sew now? The long side. You sew the long side. That's what the way you have to really watch this because it'll get you every time. I'm telling you. I've learned from experience. It looks so simple, and you don't even really think twice about what you're doing. You just start sewing. That was that little extra piece that I had. I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm getting rid of all of my black polka dot sue. I'm going to need to have more. We're going to have to go on another polka dot run. Pardon me? You got polka dots in all your blocks. I do. I have polka dots. It's fun. I'm liking it. Where do you see? Okay, so this is for, and at my block of the month, one of the ladies asked me how, obviously I've never been assembly line sewing, but she said, how do you do it without getting mixed up? You just make one stack and you just keep on taking it right off the end, and you keep your little jumper sti strip handy. Ta-da! And when you sew, those four together on the back isn't it cute the little pinwheel you can do the little pin is that cute that's very cute very cute too cute and you want to show everybody well why don't we just make our quilts inside out Okay, your little green is, you need to have four green, and the piece is what size? That is number two die, number two die. And so you're going to cut four of those, and then you need to have a big, long piece of light, and you're going to cut eight small triangles, and that one is what size? Okay, little triangles. It is number five. And 
Where do we have it? Ah, this one right here. See, that's, see, this is what I have down here. If you guys don't have this, yeah. you got to get it. Yeah. You're constant, I'm constantly trying to put them all back in order so it's really easy to do. Good. And this one, you're going to take your piece in half. It's 4 by 15. And actually, you know what? I like this so much, I'm going to do more. And I just happen to have it on the scrap. So I'm just going to fold it over. So I've got another block going. Sometimes it says how to rough cut, and instead of like cutting it to exact measurements, I just, you know, get whatever I have extra and just cut off for a second block, and I'm ready. You get to be a fiend. That's all I can say. I knew what you were doing. You knew what I was doing? Okay, so, oops, is that right? No. Whoa! Let me see. This way. That way. I'm doing the nine. This is the nine. And there's three different dies in this one. You need the four, and you need the two, and this is the five. That's the five. And the trickiest part on this one, what I really had to work on, was how to maintain your points right here. You can make a windmill, but how to keep the points right on there, okay? So we've got the windmill, and did you say good luck? Yes, I did. <laughs> good luck. I feel the same way. Okay, so let's just try this. We're going to turn the page. Oop, go to the back side and turn them all right side up. You have four squares. Ta da! Four squares, yes? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. But look, I have six, so I've got more. And you just stack four all right side up alongside, and they've got those really cute engineered corners on there. Again, we love them, right? We love them. And so those little corners really come in handy. So if you just take one and you flip it right sides together, you line it up at the top. Perfect. And Nancy, if you've never seen this before, you're going to love it. Look at the bottom. It lines up perfectly. It lines up perfectly. You have to say that loud. Yeah, that's what AccuQuilt's for. <laughs> Yay! This is a revival! So this is wonderful. This AccuQuilt is right on. Your I don't have my, my little scrap is gone. You're sucked in. You're sucked in. Okay, so one and two. It's because it's too hard for me to square up now. Um, so I'm just going to do two. And you should use your stiletto to pull one or the other if they're not lining up. Like just when I put this down naturally, the square was too short. And so I'm just, I take my tip and I just pull a little on my square underneath. You just pull a little, and then once you, I mean, it's like about um, a 30 second of an inch. <laughs> but you want to be accurate, right? Okay, so I'm just going to do two. You would be doing four. Okay, set the seam and open it. And I'm going to, uh, towards the triangle, right? There's a picture there, right? Press toward the triangle. Okay, and now this is the hard part. How are we going to get that little guy right there? Ooh, the most important thing, huh? Okay, so look at the picture, and it shows it like this, right? Like that. And look, you see a little bit? See a little bit of the seam? It's wider than a quarter. So there's a little bit there. And you line it up. 
like that. This is what we're making. That looks right, huh? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So when you flip this right sides together, almost want to have a different color. How are you doing, Ryan? Is it easy to see? Okay, this is, this is it. This is it. You've got a little circle in your pattern. You line it up at the top, but look down at the bottom. Can you see how you are lining it up? with that triangle on the bottom or with it's like the corner it's this you line up these corners and you look at the circle and if you don't get that lined up you're never going to have a quarter inch seam right there but look it's there it's there so i'm going to just start Whoop, where'd this little jumpy thing go i'm too scared now <laughs> Use that to jump with every time. Okay, so now that I'm going, I'm going to stop. And once again, if you, it's a little short, you take your stiletto and you just pull it just a little bit. But it has to line up with this corner on top. And I had Nara draw just a little sliver in the illustration. Can you see that? Ah, <laughs> only he put those stitches in and Brenda caught it. Well, he was showing. So see what it looks like here? No, marriage, you just cut. <laughs> He's over there working on our uh, Monday class. Okay, so get it anchored. Look at this corner. These little corners here have to be all lined up. There, you can see it on the top, and you see it underneath. This has been the death of me. These little things have been the death of me until I finally figured it out. So now, let's see. So open it up. Good. Oops, give me this back. You can't have that. Okay. So... Look how pretty. Ooh. And I, I need two pins. I have decided I'm the two pin girl. Two pins. I must have them. Where's the cute little box? It's gone. Okay. Hold the phone. Did you bring all oh, things? Thank you. Oh, look at that. Do you want to see it up close? Look, that's good, huh? Right there. We got it, we got wow. it. Wow. Yeah, that one. And you got this little thing sticking down there, so that's really good. So now when you put them together, you're going to put two on opposite sides of the windmill. And this is what I figured out. I have always been putting a pin right through that seam. And that shifts every time. It's yeah. making me crazy. Okay. This, I've always been doing this from the wrong side. Mm -hmm. I, I think I need to use mine. Okay, putting a pin right through here. Yeah. Checking on the other side. Ooh. A pin. Come on. Okay. And then lining it up with this seam a quarter of an inch in. Mm -hmm. And then just squeeze it together. But I found out that they shift every time on me. And they've been making me crazy. So what I decided to do was pin, get it matched up, and I'll show you, and then just get pins on each side, two pins, one on each side. And then take out that middle pin, and let's see. I'm gonna do it in front of you. I'm gonna do it live, and you have to see if it turns out. Okay. Okay? Drum okay, drum roll. Okay, this is the next thing you're gonna match. See right up here to this little guy? See? That little thing sticks out. Yeah, is that good? You just line that up there. Okay, 
Jumper! Okay, so now get it started. Yeah, hold out your tongue. Yeah. Okay, so I always put my triangle on the top. That's my tip. So that, and I'm going as close as I can so that I can either sew right through that little V or on, on the right side of it. I'm going to pull this down here, match this, hold it with my... I'm gonna, I did, oh, I meant to. There. So I used my stiletto. I used my stiletto. I forgot one of them. I used my, I was thinking about the other end, honestly. I did, I made a mistake. You guys are gonna whip me. Okay, so look, look, if you just have your stiletto, then all you do is just take your stiletto and you just pull out your pin. Those are fancy pins, aren't they? Yeah, they're Jones pins. Oh, good thing. Okay, so look at the corner. Look how nice the corner lines up. You don't have to worry about how much tip to let hang out. You just match those, those engineer corners. Okay, I'm going the rest of the way. I'm going to look in front of you. Let me see. Okay, that's good. You can look at that. You can look at that. Oh, wow. See, that's good. That's really good. Okay. Yeah. Oh my, that's a Flip it over. Is that good? Wow. Beautiful. You know what? I have been pinning on this scene over and over making these samples, and I just said, I can't rip. I'm so tired of ripping. I just can't rip anymore. Wow. So then I just said, okay, let's try two pins. Okay. So. Before I even, I mean, you don't even really need to pin this first one. If you just look at it and line it up, look at it and just line up that line and then just do your two pins, one on either side and one on the other. The fork pins I have, and if I could find them, I would have used them. Yeah, they good. They would have been really good for I, this. I, I don't know. Are they good? You like yeah, them? Yeah, they would have done exactly the same thing that I'm doing right here. But, but I, I couldn't find them, Brenda. <laughs> okay, watch. I'm going to pull out my pin. I'm going to go right up to it. Are you watching, Sally? Good. <laughs> Watch a little bit. I'm nearly there. Okay. My home ec teacher told me. Oh, another good one. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to just really ask you. It's a, a debate to me. These are on two opposite sides. Okay, so I did somewhere I pressed two in and two out. And I did some where I pressed all four out. Anybody have a decision what you think works better? Two in, two out. Two out, all four out, two in and two out. Okay, so are we going to press these first ones out? Okay, okay, so let's press those two away. Okay, set the seam. Yep, this is good. These are extra. Get rid of that. Okay, two out. Are you eyeing my floor? Well, I was in the miniature class yesterday, and those look like pretty big pieces. Right. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're really cool. Okay, so these are pressed away, out, and then these two, you're going to do exactly the same thing. Look how nice they line up. Do you see the corners, how that lines up? This is so cool. Go right there. 
that just lines up on top of each other. And you can just do your two sides and then you could press these, those went out, you could press these in, which means in this toward way. Yes, toward the middle. And this is what this is. These are out and these are in. So out and in. Good? Yeah. Good. Cool. So that's all the feather we're going to go on the windmill. The windmill. Um, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> You've probably been sitting here looking at it. You're in a good seat, Dory. Well, this one, I really liked it. This is what we did yesterday. This is what Teresa did. Isn't it adorable? Um, we were very, very busy, and I had my blocks done. I said, I want to put blocks together with lattice and cornerstones so that your secondary block becomes like a nine patch in the middle. So you see a little nine patch. Is that cute? So Dory, you were looking at that hanging there and you remind me. That was it. But this is just really simple, honestly, to tell you how quick she did it. I think she had about an hour and a half. And she wow. did layering and just a simple stitch in the ditch. But it's six, six yeah. inch blocks with lattice and cornerstones in between. I, d I bought the yellow for um, a double wedding ring. You see how the yellow got in double wedding <laughs> ring. Nouveau wedding ring. And we just had some black fabric. This was just... Just some, um, and it's, <laughs> she put the binding on for me, but she said, you will have to either pin the casing or hand sew it. Hand sew it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, said. I said, I'll do it over the weekend. <laughs> so, isn't that cute? Yeah. That's pretty good. Whoops, put that Does one up. Does Ellie do hand stitching? Pardon me? Does Ellie do hand stitching? No, I haven't taught her yet. She asked, she wanted to learn how to knit, but I haven't, I have two knitting kits for her, but I haven't done that yet. Okay, you wanna put this one up? Here, let's make a cool wall. And this one is the six inch that goes beside it. I did it in pinks. I thought that one was cute. And let's just do this little design just to help you guys remember. Okay? Two outies, two innies. Ah, oh, we got one more. Are we okay? How, what's the time? Oh, we can do it. We can do it. So this is the windmill variation. It's a little windmill variation. It's just fun to do. And this was my 12 inch. And... Oh, my 9-inch. I keep on saying 12-inch, 9-inch, and my 6-inch. Mm -hmm. It was just too much fun. But um, in the beginning, you start out, and you have to make your little windmill, which you guys already know how to do your little windmill, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You do your little windmill center. Here's the windmill center. And then you have to do your little small triangles. This is, I think I'm gonna like this one better. This is cute, huh? That's great. There, that's like that. That's going good. Whoops, I'm doing it, putting it in wrong. Okay, point, on point, on point. There we go, there we go. Okay, so. Oh, and there's just one more piece to cut. It's the second medium. It's the eight small triangles. And I'm doing a three by 10 for my six inch block. It's die number five, die number five. And I bet any money, this is it right here. Die number five. 
And you take this piece and you just fold it in half and you make eight of these at one time. Okay, there you go. Is that cute? This is going to be cute too, huh? And this one is going to be sewn exactly the same as I just did on the windmill. But you, you have a pieced square that you have instead of um, just a plain square. You make it fancy. You jazz it up. Back to where we started. Pull these little things off. Get rid of it. And this, let me see, it's going to go like that. Okay, this is... Okay, where's the picture? <laughs> okay, oh my gosh. Okay, like this, like this. Look, I can't do it without a picture. Okay. Yep, that's right. And this is on the other side, right? Okay, so let us see if we just take it right like this. Oop. There. It does. It does. It looks like it's a frame. Okay, now that I have one done, then I can just go ahead and lay out the other ones. Whenever you're watching, um, you know, watching through the camera, you're going, okay, turn it, turn it, turn it. All right, so that is just about done. And just use the same techniques that you just learned. Ah! Cute. Very, nice. very, very cute. Cool. Very good. Cool. You like it? Yes. It's really fun. Yes. Yeah. Very, very fun. So there's three of them that you have to do today, and now we're going to show you something more to do. Oh. There's more! Oh. Okay, Dory did a storm at sea. You oh. can't believe this. Do you want to stand up and talk? Okay, there's the microphone. You get to talk. There you go. Thank you. I made this for my husband for our 35th wedding anniversary, Sailing Life Stormy Seas Together. I thought that was really good. How long have you been married? 35 years in August. Wow. Sailing the Stormy Seas that Together. Is that, <laughs> that is really cute. Thank you very Did much. Did you see it yet? Yeah, he's picked some of the different things, although he picked one thing, and I said, well, that's kind of boring. If you do that, I'm going to have to put orange over here. And he said, oh, well, let's change it then. Because he doesn't like orange. That is really <laughs> cool. So you you printed out the dies? Yeah. And are they laying around here someplace? Here, I'll hold this. Okay, hold and this. maybe you can tell them. You want to you wanna tell them? Okay. So it's all AccuQuilt. Okay, and you guys hold it up again, and I'll show it under the camera. All right. Okay, so you can go to the AccuQuilt website. And you will see, it says it's the Go Storm at Sea. And it shows a picture of it. That is really good. That is really, really cool. I really like it. And it shows you, this is the Storm at Sea die. Isn't it cute? And it's, it's, it's just that one die, but there's... See, I didn't use their pattern. I used, because their pattern uses the three-inch... Uh-huh. Their pattern uses the three inch of those uh, Storm at Sea triangles, these. And I wanted to use my nine inch die kit, uh -huh. so I used the four inch one. Okay. And then cut it to fit. All right, cool. So you can get the instructions and you can just get the die too. That's fabulous. 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 It was really easy. The because because I used the four inch with this, I had to cut it down to get the right size, and that took away any mistakes that I might have made. So it worked really well. Wow. I like your little boats. Thank you. So what are your sailboats? Um, my sailboats are the half square, the large half square triangle, <laughs> and then. These are half square triangles, there. and this is the small rectangle. Uh huh. It's the rectangle. Wow. The boat is really cute. That's Thank you. Clever. I really like the boat. It really is beautiful. Yeah. Thank the you boat very is very much. Cute.
<laughs> well, let me tell you that each square here has, I, it was either 52 or 54 pieces. But with the AccuQuilt, it was cut out so fast, I would never have made this, I don't think, without the AccuQuilt, even though I wanted to. Wow. That was really oh, cute. Really cool. Really cool. All right. Thank you. That's cool. So you have lots of work to do now, huh? Woo. You love the box. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you.